Video games have their fair share of auteurs who get a lot of praise, but let's face it, the industry is no stranger to rad dudes who don't get the credit they should. Most of the recognizable names are the real top guns, the Shigeru Miyamotos, the Hideo Kojimas, super well-known directors with really distinct styles and values. A little down the ladder though, you'll find some who come with their own set of design philosophies and principles worth studying. Case in point, Yoshiaki Koizumi. If you don't know him, then you definitely know his stuff. He's worked on some of the most iconic games in Nintendo's library, and some call him Miyamoto's protege. You can see this in a lot of his design. He has a really strong focus on wanting even the most basic forms of interaction to be fun in and of themselves. This most likely grew from being a 3D animator on Super Mario 64, a game on which Miyamoto famously pushed the need for just controlling Mario moving around to be fun. In one Iwata asks, he stated, Fundamentally, I think a Mario game is the type of game that's really not about completing the game, but rather about having fun just playing. An extension of this idea is what he refers to as ease of play. Koizumi subscribes to the pretty pervasive Nintendo doctrine of liking games to be as easy to pick up and play as possible. Koizumi hates unnecessary obstacles or annoyances for the player, principally those that come with the camera in a 3D space. The man seems to want the camera to be an invisible part of games. In the past, he's voiced his concerns that the camera in 3D games often represents an easy way for players to get lost or not be fully involved in play. While this may sound a little ridiculous, if you've ever watched someone who doesn't play games have to move and adjust the camera separately, you can totally get behind this idea of ease of play. Koizumi has said that he wants the whole family to enjoy a game, and that doesn't happen if a player is constantly getting lost or breaking the rhythm to realign their perspective. Having worked as the director of Super Mario Galaxy, he stated that the advantage of spherical worlds is there's no point where the player reaches the edge of a stage and has to turn around and readjust the camera. This later evolved into a main theme of development, that we should tune the game to allow people to play without ever even having to think about the camera. This helps the player not get lost because there's less directional movement to think about. Usually, if you're on the wrong side of a planetoid in relation to the objective, you can keep running in one direction until you get there. Another problem he has with 3D games is depth misperception. While it's easy to gauge distance in a 2D game, distance on a Z-axis is more difficult when viewing a 2D screen. Koizumi's solution to this problem when working on Ocarina of Time was coming up with a profoundly influential Z-targeting system. This keeps both the player character and enemy on the same plane. Mitigate some potential disorientation or problems with depth perception. This also means the player doesn't have to focus on moving the camera in the middle of a fight. When you've got a fighting system that involves two dudes punching it up, it's pretty wise to try and keep both of them at pretty constant positions in frame at all times. Platinum, take note. Please. What's also notable is it makes your movement relative to an enemy, making strafing easier and allowing for directional inputs, like holding forward while attacking to do a stab or backwards to do a sick backflip. The fact that Koizumi managed to get this right back in 98 while some games these days still have problems with disorientating cameras is testament to how highly he values conveying information cleanly. It was so genius that such a system became standard for melee combat in 3D action games, in fact the absence of such a lock-on is often considered laughable. But his influence on Zelda extends further than just the camera locking system. Yoshiaki Koizumi was educated in film and animation, and originally wanted to be a Leet Street film director. On why he joined Nintendo, he told Wired Magazine that he wanted to make drama. That was my goal. Having a character in a certain kind of world, having him go through a series of actions to accomplish something and creating a dramatic tension throughout that. And games seemed like a really good opportunity to create a kind of drama that you don't find in films. The guy started on the manual for A Link to the Past and was behind some of the series standards like The Three Goddesses, but Koizumi really came into his own with A Link's Awakening. Not only was this one of the most different and original games in the series history, but it's where he found his calling for how his stories are told. Having worked under the wing of Miyamoto, the kind of person who tries to keep stories out of games, Koizumi had to sneak his narrative into titles he worked on. Koizumi tends to favour a narrative style where a bulk of the story is found simply through interacting with characters. Not only does this make for a much richer world, but it ties into his central philosophies of removing roadblocks for players. Yoshiaki Koizumi has said that Miyamoto creates a goal for the player, like saving the princess, whereas he likes to create much more nuanced narratives with the drama undercutting all aspects of a game's inhabitants. This kind of approach is seen most clearly in how 
how he basically saved Majora's Mask. Not only did he bring the three-day cycle to the game from an earlier cops and robbers concept he was working on, but he's also responsible for the game's magnificent story. Majora's Mask isn't just great for its plot or its weirdness. The richness of the narrative comes in the interactions you have with the residents of this spooky crib. Some people like the long, forced, plot-driven cutscenes of Skyward Sword, and I'm not saying they have awful taste, but Majora's focus on characters gives it the most dramatic and impactful moments the franchise has to offer. Characters are a huge part of world building. Allusions to further going-ons with non-playable characters create an investing narrative, especially when placed in a screwball kind of world like Majora's Mask. Unfortunately, Koizumi isn't perfect. He has a habit of not really sticking to this when it comes to introductions. I don't mind a bit of ominous world building in something like Majora's Mask, but I don't want to have to sit through a few good men when I boot up Super Mario Sunshine. You do get a little of the side character stuff in his later titles. Galaxy has the adorable storybook sequence as an admittedly clunkily implemented side thing, but it's clear that since Majora, Koizumi's influence has been diminished over the years. Not only has he been relegated to a series that has a little to no narrative interference, he hasn't been a director since 2007. And hey, I really like Super Mario 3D World, but having him be a producer on a game like that doesn't let the guy flex his muscles. Koizumi isn't just a great storyteller, he knows his way around game design too. While he may not always get things totally right, he's the man behind one of the defining factors of 3D combat and many of his principles still stick to those popular with Nintendo's top dogs. Whether you agree or disagree with these principles, they're interesting to take a look at. It's interesting to see how a man brought into the business by Miyamoto can be so similar yet so different in ideas to him. For me, he's one of the most creative minds Nintendo has and should be put on some bigger projects. I'd love to have him back on The Legend of Zelda. Sadly, that doesn't seem likely. Here's a little exchange between him and Eiji Aonuma in one Iwata asks. I'll make the next Legend of Zelda game, then you can enjoy playing it. No way. Thing is, there are probably dozens of guys just like Koizumi within Nintendo's ranks that don't get the spotlight they deserve in favour of some of the older guys. If we're lucky, then some of these people should get a little more free reign to pursue the projects they have a real vision for. But for now, keep on trying Koizumi. Hopefully someday you'll get a chance to be creative again.